So in this video, I am going to be drawing black wavy fur on the dark grey Claire Fontaine pastel mat. I'm going to be using the black polychromos, the dark indigo, the warm grey 2, uh, a Pablo Coco, um, a polychromos um, Payne's grey, uh, Pablo light grey and the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle white. So to make a start, I'm using a black polychromos and I am just plotting in the darkest areas that I can see. So just rough shapes of the shadows that I can see within the photograph. Um, there's no detail particularly. I'm following the direction of the hair where I can um, and I'm literally just sort of, you know, plotting these, these dark areas. It doesn't necessarily have to follow the photograph exactly. I then start with a white Pablo, this is Caran d'Ache Pablo, um, and I just come in over the top of the black and put in some of the highlights that I can see um, from the photograph. Again, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Um, then I've got the Payne's Grey, um, Polychromos Payne's Grey, and I start to then build in the rest of the bits in between, so almost like the mid-tones, if you like always following the direction of the hair um, and just sort of popping in those those bits that are missing. I can kind of darken up the, the darker areas if I need to do. Um, back to the black again and really start to um, darken up those the darkest areas. What you have to remember when you're drawing a piece like this or when you're drawing fur or portrait or anything, especially on the pastel mat, is that it does look terrible um, for a little while. And I think if you understand that and you have that expectation, um, then you don't feel like everything's going wrong and it's not working. So I'm incorporating um, the dark indigo in there as well. And that's just to give me sort of like darker darks, if you like. This particular photo that I've used has got some really warm areas up at the top. So I decided to use a Pablo Coco just to help with that sort of warmer tone. The Coco's, it's like a... Um, well, it's like a cocoa brown it's it's uh, it's a really nice color the other thing as well is with it being a pablo it's quite soft so it tends to um smooth out the pencil on the pastel mat um which is you know is, is a really good thing because pastel mat can be a little bit grainy um so building up the darks there and then coming in again and this is kind of where it starts to really take shape so I'm coming in and I'm actually adding some really quite uh, dense highlights in here now. So we're starting to get a feel of the fur. Uh, we're starting to get some of those really light highlights in there. It's still looking a little bit iffy in places, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's getting there. Um, we then come back in and start to really intensify those darker areas. This is the black polychromos that I'm using at the moment. Um, always relatively light pressure that I'm using all the way through in these in these different layers. Um, if I've got a really dark area, I might press a little bit harder. Um, always following the direction of the fur. That's one of the main things I think to remember when you're dra drawing something like this is to really take note of the direction of the hair because it makes a massive difference. Um, starting now to be able to put in some of the smaller details. I find when I'm drawing hair like this, the more shapes I can create in the piece, the more I can then create details later on. Um, and shapes can be added um, with the different colours. Um, obviously, I've, I've managed to add um, quite a few colours or quite a few shapes in with the, with the lighter uh, light grey Pablo uh, and then I can incorporate into those shapes um, the shadows, some of the mid-tones and leave some of the highlight areas in there. I don't tend to use a really sharp pencil um, for my fur drawings uh, and that's there's a couple of reasons behind that. One is that a really sharp pencil 
can actually mark the pastel mat. Um, it can leave a mark and then it's difficult to kind of draw over the top of it. And the other reason is actually with a blunter end to your pencil, you can get more pigment down on the paper and it actually comes out a little bit softer. So that's those are, those are two reasons why I, I don't tend to um, keep a really sharp point on my, um, on my pencils. You can start to see here actually how it's really taking shape now. You can see those curls starting to um, starting to appear. Uh, you know the highlights that I put in um, along the way they're staying but we're starting to um, you know really come in and 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 add more darks really start to define those curls and starting to get a real depth uh, into this fur so that by the end of it hopefully we'll you know we'll start to be able to um, to to almost feel that it's it's real fur um, one of the things that I find I think really really makes the fur look real is to add these little tiny stray hairs relatively early on. Um, I think it helps you as the artist um, because it, it makes things seem a little bit more real. It also adds more opportunity for creating shapes. Um, so I'm using very light pressure uh, I use the light grey Pablo and then this pencil here that I'm using is the Museum Aquarelle White. This is a fabulous, fabulous pencil to draw light over dark. And you can see how I'm just adding in little stray hairs. I might be using a little bit extra pressure to create whiter areas. Um, and I'm just sort of adding these little stray hairs all over the piece and it's starting to look much more real now. Um, creating those little shapes um, in and out of and around the curls is really going to help me in the next stage where I start to darken everything up and this is where it starts to look like real fur you're starting to add real depth in here um, you know and, and hopefully it will look like you can actually reach in and kind of touch the fur and and feel its depth so feel that you've got fur you know that's close to the skin building up you've got the gorgeous shine in the fur there um, and it's and it's it's starting to look quite nice from those horrible horrible first layers where you know it really does look pretty grim um, to now looking really you know quite fur like um, you know and that's why you have to have that expectation at the beginning knowing that those initial marks that you put down you were going in the right direction, um, you know, because it's so easy to to give up when something's looking not very good. So really starting to define these curls now. You may leave quite a few of the um, the highlights in. You might decide that some of the highlights you need to darken. Um, this one in particular, um, you know, it needs it needs it needs darkening up. Uh, the other thing as well is you'll see that actually this isn't a complete replica of um, the photograph. Um, you know, I've kind of gone off on a tangent in certain places, and and actually that it's not a problem for me. Um, you know, I'm I'm wanting to draw fur. I'm wanting to get the feeling of the of the the, the dog's fur, the dog's hair. Uh, I'm not looking to um, copy the photograph exactly. I'm looking for the look and feel of the photo and the dog's hair rather than it being a, a complete copy of the photograph. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not that bothered if, you know, I've added an extra curl in here or there or I've missed one out. It's not, you know, as long as I've got the look and the feel of the, um, of the hair, then that's okay for me. So it's all in the layers. Um, there aren't hundreds of layers in this piece um, at all, by any means. Um, and it's a lot of it is about your pencil choices. Um, so pastel mat is renowned for being a paper that you can add a lot of layers into, which is fantastic. Um, but if you don't want to add a lot of layers, you don't need to. 
and actually choosing different pencils to help you. Uh, so choosing the Pablos over the top of the, um, the Polychromos will really help with smoothing. Um, the way that you add your colours, uh, so the light over the top of the dark, that's going to really, um, really help with uh, the graininess and having things really nice and smooth. Um, and also um, using blunter pencils, I think, really helps too. So here again, using the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle, just adding in some of those final little um, stray hairs. Re it really does make things look, um, you know, I think it makes it look really realistic. And the, the beauty of the pastel mat is that you can get the light over dark and it, and it does work incredibly well. The reason I chose the dark grey pastel mat was purely because it's a dark fur and it's going to help me because it, I'm, it's kind of my mid-tones, it's, it's kind of halfway there. So choosing a paper colour to really help uh, give me a head start um, I think is, is always a, a good idea. So if I was using, if I was drawing white fur, I would choose white paper um, to draw on rather than the dark grey because um, I'm halfway there uh, with the white paper so hence the, the, the dark grey with, um, with the black fur. So brightening up certain areas, um, you know, bringing in sort of some more little highlighty bits just to kind of help pull those hairs right to the foreground um, and, and little, you know, finishing off little areas. Um, and we get a really, really nice, um, nice piece of, of, um, of fur actually. I'm, I'm, I'm really very pleased with how it's turned out. Um, this is going to be a full three hour uh, tutorial on my Patreon channel. Uh, so if you want to check that out, please do. Um, I also will be having some more in-depth fur uh, videos as well. So we'll have white fur, we'll have um, some more curly fur, some long fur, um, you know, some sort of ready colored fur. So, you know, do, do check out and subscribe to my channel.